Yo, how is it going everyone? Welcome back to Skill Kept. My name is Jack, also known as Lionhearts, your mix master DJ playing sick lo-fi tier list to dominate rank 2. And today, you guessed it, we got the first post breeze patch and that means we got our first post breeze agent tier list. Today is a big day for Valorant. Breeze enters the ranked ladder for the first time, and with that, you'll want to know the biggest gamer agent selections to take in, so that you can gobble up that hot, fresh ranked rating increases. As per usual, we consult the highest levels of pro play, the everyday Joseph the Jetman and Silver, and everything in between before and after to make this list. So without a single further ado, let's get our question of the day going and let her rip, bud. So our question of the day is, do you guys think we should see the current maps reworked before we get our next new map? Now, I do speak for a lot of people when I say that we've seen map design improve over time since Valorant's launch. Bind, Haven, and Split have all had small, and in Split's case, pretty significant map changes to bring them up to the standards of a map like Ascent. And while Icebox certainly hasn't been received well, it looks like Breeze might just be the best map developed yet. So why not take the opportunity to make some bigger changes to maps like Haven and Icebox specifically, which the community have had issues with since their releases. I personally would rather Riot spend the time making the current map pool as good as it could be instead of drowning them out with more maps instead. But hey, that's just me, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Alright, ba bam tier list, here it is, look at it, it's amazing. We start at D, work our way to OP, and rank the agents as we go in between. Jumping right into it, you see this D tier right here? This little blight on the balance of the game? Ages of D tier are hurting and we need to support them. Well guess what D tier, there aren't any agents caught in your diabolical grips, so get that mess out of here, no more D tier, let's move on. Right to talking about skillcap.com, brother. Why am I talking like this? I don't know, we're here. Right among all these advanced training modules, need to master a new agent, we got that. Become the new ruler of Icebox, we got that. Ranked improvement guarantee, ooh yeah. So what are you waiting for? Sign up right now with the link down below before I have a brief flashbang and elbow drop you right into the void, brother. Anyways, once we've calmed down, drank some water to help the sore throat, we can move on to the C tier. Our C tier agents are in that good but not used territory, either hard to make useful in comparison to other agents or just unexplored. Sky kind of exemplifies that paradigm because I see Skies every once in a while and either it's death by blinding burb or they just don't use their kit very effectively. It's like Sky is sink or swim. Sky means either ruin games entirely or just end up being mediocre. I think what it boils down to is that Sky has to juggle a lot of downtime where you can't have a gun out. Wanna throw a flash? Gotta guide it in. Wanna scout? Well you gotta guide it in. Wanna heal? Well you gotta put the bullet hose down and do like you did in school where you would pretend to have psychic powers and levitate something between your hands instead of just having a weapon out. There's just so much time when you can't be ready to shoot somebody, which means that playing Sky is difficult. You have to be good, you have to have good game sense and timing to be able to flash and clear quarters without being caught in between your draw animations. Which we feel is overall a key contributor to why Sky isn't picked very often. Moving on, we got the good old B tier, good agents, but they tend to have a glaring issue that keeps them from being picked very often. Or, they're in that position of having their job done strictly better by the agents above them in the tier list. Starting off, we got a new addition dropping precariously from his A tier position, and it's Phoenix. Phoenix has continued his descent from the top of the Asian tier list, and he's finally hit his lowest placement ever. And that's obviously sad, but why is that happening? Well, in short, it's the big three duelists that take up the real estate that Phoenix once occupied. Jet is crazy, Raze is crazy, and Reyna is crazy and ranked, but not so much in the pros. So we have a pretty strict dichotomy here. North American pros still value Phoenix quite highly. In the recent BCT Challenger Stage 2 Finals, we saw a 41% pick rate, predominantly on Haven and Ascent, and that makes sense. Reyna isn't used hardly ever, and Phoenix's flashes and ultimate are very good on that map. But for us, the mere mortals, Reyna can and often does replace Phoenix, and that's resulted in his continual slip down the tiering rung. But, none of that has to say Phoenix is bad, in fact he's really quite good, and I think if we see adjustments to Jet or Raze, then I would bet that Phoenix can easily climb back, but for now he's unfortunately down in the B tier. Keeping it moving, we got Cypher next on the B tier. Cypher is in the same spot he's been for a while now, but some good news is here. Breeze has turned out to be a much better map for Cypher than I had anticipated. Initially, I had assumed that Killjoy would be the definitive sentinel on this map, but in reality, Killjoy had a lot more problems than I had anticipated by comparison. Cypher's ability to cut up the key choke points and his cameras being able to see literally everything has put him in a unique spot where I would consider him the best sentinel for Breeze as of right now. This doesn't change our previous thoughts on Cypher and his struggles outside of coordinated play, but for my dedicated Cypher mains out there, few and far between you may be, Breeze is a playground for the man in the fedora, so go wild. 
Heading over to another B tier mainstay, it's Brimstone. I hate to be mean to my boy Brimmy McStimmy, but my fears were pretty well dignified. Breeze is just way too big for Brim, and that adds another reason to not use him over the other controllers. And with another meta shift we'll get into later, Brim is just unfortunately being left behind more and more often. Again, I have to reiterate that despite all this, Brim does have very attractive qualities for maps like Haven and Bind. The ability to instantly execute a sight take could be very valuable, and as a solo queue controller, Brim does very well. He's just what he's always been since the rise of Omen, a good but not amazing or standout controller, and that's why he's like permanently B tier. Rounding out the B tier, we got Yoru. Yoru is now once again in a weird spot. He's thoroughly creative and genuinely fun to play, but the footsteps ability is absolutely useless in our and everyone else's opinion. That means an entire part of his kit potential is left behind, and that makes him at this point incomplete. With Ryan having confirmed more changes on the way, it's hard to see Yoru being able to move up or down the list until we get his final form, so to speak. But, for what he is now, I think he's incredibly fun and has diverse gameplay. And as far as Breeze is concerned, it's like a teleflank wonderland. So Yoru mains are having a lot of fun right now, but it definitely takes someone dedicated to the Yoru lifestyle to get a lot out of him. Alright, it's time for the A tier. We're getting to the good stuff now. A tier agents are the supporting cast, often to the best agents in the S and OP tier. Sometimes insta locked, sometimes not. A tier agents are definitely worth playing, but they fall just short of S tier status. Our first A tier is a curious case, and that's Astra. Astra has, uh, up until now, nearly non-existent use in ranked, while being really, really good. But we're finally starting to see the pro play perspective, specifically in North America. We're recently in the VCT Stage 2 Challengers Finals. I mean, just look at the stats page for VLR.GG, oh my god. Yeah, that's nuts. Astra is the second most used agent behind Sova, ahead of Jet, Raze, and Killjoy. Absolutely wild. But what does this mean long term? Well, this could just be an NA thing. North America traditionally likes speed and being able to set up an execute ahead of time and just pop them as you push in is probably very attractive, instead of Omen being stuck in his menu as the team begins the site take. Obviously, the outlier for Astro is Icebox, which makes sense. That's Viper's Wonderland, and yes indeed, we were seeing double controllers with Viper and Omen, or Astro and Viper, which makes sense because of the synergies provided there. Now, is this me saying to you, the local Omen main, it's time to give up all hope and abandon the blue boy and start maining 4D Chestra? No. I think Astro is really good at higher levels of play, and especially in coordination, a lot like Sky or Cypher. So give her a go if you're looking for a new controller to operate, but she's certainly not going to be taking over the meta entirely anytime soon, I don't think. Moving on, we got another A tier staple, and that's Killjoy. Killjoy is cruising as per usual, but I want to clarify that Killjoy is probably the best example of a map specialist we've had in a while. She's basically a required pick on Ascent alongside Legolas with the Odin, and that's been the case at the pro level for a while now. I mean, it's just a Killjoy Wonderland on Ascent. She can literally delete the entire map on offense and defense with her ultimate. She's a post plant menace and an absolutely unparalleled side anchor. But what for us plebs and the other maps? Well, Killjoy is also a menace pretty much everywhere in the game in ranked except for Breeze. It's just too big and too open. I would also say Bind can be difficult because of the terror that is Raze, but even then you can certainly get away with it. I think in general for ranked, Killjoy is not as overall good as Sage, but she's certainly not far off, and if you're a Killjoy main, you're definitely going to get a lot of success out of that. Rounding out the A tier, we got Breach. Breach is still in the weird spot of being annoying, sometimes literally uncounterable, but yet alas, underplayed. As we talked about in the past, he definitely suffers from where are my teammates syndrome, but god, even then he's so good it's just gross. I just really, I, I keep on spouting how good Breach is, because I don't want him to get buffed. Right? Please don't delete the game and buff Breach, I beg you, he's good, just no one plays him. Don't, just leave it, please. For all that is holy and sacred and nice and good in this world. And here we are at the big boy S tier, let's get it going, you know the deal, this is the tier of the real big winners in Valorant. Starting it off, let's talk about Viper. We've had the Viper meta for a while now, and the results have been staggeringly good. Viper went from a non-existent pro presence to being considered meta on Split and Icebox, as well as having viability on every map in the game if you take the time to practice, and this has definitely transitioned into ranked. Viper mains are everywhere, torturing poor jets who are used to being able to run through any smoke without any punishment whatsoever, and obviously that's not possible against the Toxic Queen herself. But, Viper unfortunately has not escaped the gaze of Rito Games and starting today in patch 2.09, she's received what this Viper enthusiast would call a small nerf. Her instant decay was changed from 50 damage to 30. This means stepping through a Viper wall or smoke no longer cuts off full armor entirely, but more or less cuts a light armor chunk out of you. Now, while this is certainly less powerful, I don't believe this hurts Viper's long-term viability, making the Phantom effectively have the Vandal's lethality is worth the price of admission, and her zoning, post-plant, and side anchoring are still nearly unparalleled. 
All this means in practice is that full by players are no longer vulnerable to martial body shots for pushing a Viper, which seems fair in my opinion. So Viper is really, really good despite this nerf, but what may hold her back at this point? Well, it's hard to say, but I would say it's a mixture of it being very hard to run her as a solo controller, which is what's standard in most levels of play, and like Sova, you need lineups to be successful, and that means a barrier to entry for new players, despite some admittedly great swords out there and in production currently. I think Viper will overall maintain a niche presence in ranked, but if you do see her in your queue, get ready to deal with the true power of an agent who had been maligned as useless, and is here to make everyone eat those words. Moving on, we got Reyna. I have literally nothing new to add here. Reyna is taking the spot of Phoenix as a god tier entry for aggressive players or the most obnoxious lurker known to man. Reyna is really, 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 really good as a solo queue agent. Just be wary at the higher levels because the rising headshot percentages make Reyna more risky and please for the love of god telegraph to your teammates if you plan to play aggressively or not because it changes your teams up drastically if they can't count on you to entry. Sova is the current most picked agent at the pro level across EU and NA and a consistent top spot in Korea as well. He's so dumb good that a competent Sova can have the same impact as a competent operator. It makes it literally oppressive for the enemy team to operate and not fun to play against. Speaking of operating, despite the weird Astro Blurp in BCT, Omen is by far the best leader in the operation department. If you want an all around great controller for variable and reactive sight takes and defensive holds, the ultimate offers mix ups and flanks, and Paranoia is another great stun in a team's arsenal. It's Omen, we all know how good he is. Just like how good Sage is, it's Sage baby, whether Grim Walls are your game or you just want to literally annoy the entire enemy team by cutting off key chokes, slowing down everything known to goddamn man, and reviving that jet maimed smurf carry for another round of Ferrari Peak 1 taps. Respect Sage and you will be rewarded both with and against the healer of Valorant. And here we are at the OP tier, the tier of terror for those who don't play these agents, and the tier of triumph for those who do, the cream of the cream of the creamiest crop, these agents are unreal good right now. Starting it off is the old god of OP at this point, it's freaking Jet! What does Jet do? Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge again, either shoving a judge down your teeth, hitting you in the hat with an operator before wishing out at Mach 1, or, you know, just ignoring the economy principles entirely and being able to full buy whenever they want as long as their ultimate is charged, meaning that Jet is a nightmare snowball agent that as long as Jet gets kills, it doesn't matter if you kill the back or win the round, Jet can buy indefinitely, and some of those buys have full running and in-air accuracy and if an ammo if you can click heads. All that combined with smokes and complex smoke dash strats are why Jet is so... Goddamn ridiculous. And arguably, despite all those advantages, Raze is just as ridiculous just for different reasons. Mainly, all the ways raids can kill you. Aggressive satchel entries, grenades, boom bots for scouting, and an ultimate that if you don't get a kill with, is honestly your fault instead of a good play by the enemy. All of this means that Raze is a god tier duelist in the sense that she can adapt to almost any situation, but in general, where Raze shines is right in the mix. You don't necessarily need to entry, but Raze needs to be on the front line. Lurking as Raze is actually the worst thing to ever exist and you shouldn't do it. Stop. Get in the mix, cause some chaos, and have some fun. Raze at the end of it all is fun to play, and her being viable is just another reason to play her for this Raze enthusiast here. Alright, here it is, the big final tier list. Not much changed here, but the meta is continuing to evolve. The pick rates especially are certainly shifting outside of Sova and arguably Omen. At the pro level, we actually see a ton of variety in what combinations of B through OP tier agents you will see in a given game, which is much more fresh than in previous metas. But hey, that's just our tier list. Let me know your personal tier list in the comments down below. While you are down there, make sure to like and subscribe, and hey, hit that bell icon so you don't miss an upload. We upload every single day with a team of dedicated Valorant fans always working to bring you informative and entertaining content, and we will continue to do so because we here at Skillcapped are here to do one thing, help you become a better player. And we would like to thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.